What's up, ladies? First off, we're going to be talking about my job as an architect. So, first thing we're going to be looking at is uh, how blueprints are written. That's the most important part of this job. To do it, obviously, because you got to draw blueprints to build a building. I mean, all right, yeah, let's just look at that. All right, well, here's your average blueprint. It's got measurements to show all the lengths and widths of the rooms and it's got piping you can see on the dotted lines and as well as stairwells and other things that are necessary for the building of the house the foundation is the most important part so you really can't mess up measurements or else if it collapses that's on you and it's not going to look very well on the job obviously all right well i've taken it upon myself to draw a little blueprint of my own this is what it might look like when it's starting. It's not going to be good. It's going to be crap. It's going to be it's going to be really bad. So obviously this is unacceptable in every way towards actually building a home obviously. So the architect's job is when an engineer or something draws something like this, you got to fix it and hopefully get it to the position that it was in the last slide that I just showed and talked about. That's the main goal and hoping it doesn't not collapse obviously. So yeah, that's the blueprints part of it. Okay, next on the list, you got your schooling chart. So, to become an architect, you have to go to school for four to six years. You have to get your master in architecture, and then you have to work at a firm for two to three years. Um, what I mean by work at a firm you have to follow another architect around from another company for two to three years and then you finally they believe they're that they're confident enough in you to have you build your own buildings like they can't just have you come out of school and then actually build something that's a little little bit much even though it, if you were a straight-a student it doesn't even matter you could make a bridge collapse and kill thousands of people no lie that that's happened before and so you're going to follow this guy around and do everything he does, and once they think you're good enough, they'll let you go and start your own business. And then there's my little chart. You book money. Well, lastly, we're going to be talking about being on the job. So when you're actually working for your own business, this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be working with engineers to build a home. You're going to be plotting the build area where you're going to build it, clearing that out. You're going to be creating a blueprint, and then you're going to be supervising a actual build. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is, like, you're going to be doing all of this at, like, within between the time of, it depends on the client's deadline, so it could be between two to three days or months and years just to like plan these things not actually build the item so when you're working with the engineer I'm not saying that that's that they're bad at what they do but like 99.9% .9 of the time apparently they're gonna mess something up so you gotta fix that and if you don't you're how do I say this nicely you're not in a good position because like I said, that building falls. That's <laughs> you're you will never be hired again in your entire life. So safety first when you're building. Also, wear a helmet because you're going to be there 99% of the time as well. You're going to actually be with the construction workers doing the job. Yeah, that's <laughs> and then also again plotting a build area. That's you gotta pick a nice spot. If you pick the wrong land, like let's say you're in California, you pick like a fault line, you earthquakes, not good, not fun. So yeah, that's that's how you become an architect.